Hello everyone and welcome back to another really awesome game from round 6 of the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2022. It's Hikaru Nakamura versus Ding Liren and it is, uh, well, as you might uh, might expect, a very, very complicated game uh, that will, uh, well, just be very, very enjoyable for you, I believe. But before we check out the actual game, I would just like to mention uh, if by any chance you run into Boris Gelfand uh, today in a, you know, in a bar or in a library or wherever, uh, do uh, not forget to uh, wish him a very happy birthday so just uh, just saying you know uh, uh, in case you run into him you never know uh, but now getting back to the game uh, Nakamura opens with pawn to e4 and the ding replies with e5 we have knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to c4 uh, and the ding goes for knight to f6 the two knights defense of course he's avoiding the Evans gambit he's uh, you know not, not going into that so knight f6 we have d3 and bishop to c5 going into the Joko pianissimo very variation c3 and now pawn to d6 we have castles by both players uh, and here hikaru goes rook to e1 uh, uh, hikaru goes rook to e1 and this has been played so many times that we are not going to even discuss the moves uh, we have a5 stopping b4 from white which is always a good idea uh, h3 h6 and now knight b to d2 we have bishop to e6 attacking the bishop and the bishop to b5 we have queen to b8 uh, going for the standard idea of shifting the queen over to a7 and then you're gonna put uh, incredible pressure on this diagonal and now uh, a knight to f1 is the most popular here but we have an instant trade the bishop captures b captures and now pawn to d4 attacking the bishop captures captures and bishop back to b6 and here pawn to a4 so again nothing new here rook to e8 and rook to a3 now later on uh, when the knight moves you can uh, easily shift the rook into the attack and there is a game uh, very very uh uh, well-known one from 2017, Anish Giri had it against David Anton Giharo, uh, where um, uh, David Anton played queen to b7, Anish was able to win that game, but here Ding plays queen to a7, and it is now as of move 15 that we have a completely new game, uh, and now uh, what is uh, wh what can Hikaru do here? So he, uh, there's a lot of pressure on this diagonal, obviously you can't just push some pawns, uh, you're gonna lose the f2 pawn, so knight to f1, uh, we have d5 by ding and now pawn to e5. You allow Hikaru to grab more space in the center, but you also win the e4 square for your pieces. So knight to e4, now Hikaru attacks the knight, knight 1 to d2 and bishop to f5. We have rook to e2, adding another defender to the f2 pawn, and here we have rook a to d8. Uh, if you're wondering about this pawn, whether we could capture it or not, of course you, you cannot. Uh, if you capture it, then we just capture the knight and now you're, you're just down a piece doesn't really matter what you play if d captures an e4 attacks the knight we simply capture with the knight attack the bishop and that's it we play bishop b3 uh, we are up a full knight so that's uh, out of the question so rook a to d8 the ding just continues development and now knight to b3 the d4 pawn is nicely defended uh, but the ding says um, uh, you know what you have a very strong center but i have a double c pawn and uh, i don't need uh, you know a, a double pawn so i'm just going to advance one of them uh, to mess up your pawn structure here and it is of course the absolute best move Hikaru has to capture we have bishop captures knight captures and queen captures on c5 still putting a really uh, just a lot of pressure here on this f2 square uh, knight to d4 attacking the bishop and the bishop back to d7 nicely controlling the knight on d4 uh, bishop to f4 uh, just continuing development you have to develop this bishop somewhere and now queen back to e7 and uh, uh, what can Hikaru do here? He goes for knight to b5. Uh, the very interesting pawn push with pawn to e6 is, uh, that's all that it is, it's just very interesting. The point is, if you capture with the bishop, okay, we can win some material here, but if you capture with the pawn, uh, there's just uh, n not a good continuation for Hikaru. He can simply start trading bishop captures on c7, bishop captures on a4, queen captures, queen captures, we're gonna capture on a5, and you get this position uh, where it's equal material. Uh, Hikaru would have a pass b pawn, d a pass d pawn but uh, you know it, it's nothing really so instead hikaru goes for knight to b5 uh, and Ding captures it. If you could play c5, that would be very nice. You would have a lot of presence in the center. But the problem is, uh, here Hikaru can just go for this annoying rook captures an e4 idea. D captures knight to d6, and this knight is now just a monster here. Hikaru uh, is putting all of this pressure. Look at the bishop, look at the knight. The rook is coming to g3. The queen is coming to h5. I, I mean, it's just a, an incredible position uh, for, uh, yes, for, for an exchange sacrifice. But the knight on d6 is a monster. It's on a dark 
dark square Ding ha only has a light square bishop he's not going to be able to um, uh, move it from there it's uh, th this knight is stronger than all of these pieces combined so of course uh, he's not going to allow this Ding eliminates the knight a bishop captures on b5 a captures and now knight to g5 remaneuvering the knight over to uh, e6 and while well, you could maybe trade and and grab the a5 pawn uh it, it it's really nothing captures an a5 uh, uh Ding just captures an e5 or he starts pushing d4 so uh, again nothing really to worry about here so here hikaru tries grabbing the a5 pawn right away and now it's up to Ding to prove that uh well this uh, uh he's down a pawn so he, can he play this so knight to e6 uh, attacking the bishop here bishop back to d2 and now pawn to d4 Ding starts pushing his pass pawn rook to a3 hikaru wants to remaneuver this rook back into the attack and now queen to c5 uh, going after the b5 pawn and later on maybe even the b2 pawn we have rook to g3 by hikaru now putting pressure uh, on that king as bishop captures and h6 is now always an idea uh, but just pawn to d3 attacking the rook here rook to e1 and now ding captures the pawn we have queen captures on b5 and now the question is can you capture on h6 right away and should you if you can uh, well not really if you capture on h6 right now then d2 wins the game for ding but it's not um, uh, all that all that clear why for example rook to e3 king to f8 and now what do you play now we are threatening to win the bishop here so uh wh where do you move the bishop that's uh that's the question uh, and if you try harassing the queen for example something like this we can even give up the queen or rather give up uh, the, the queen for two rooks and the position is uh well just winning for black you, you, you if you grab the pawn which you can for the moment then we double up here and e even if you deliver this check to save your bishop c5 uh, ensures that you don't save the bishop you're gonna have to give it up and now it's a uh, queen against two rooks and the knight this would of course be winning for ding so a premature bishop capture on h6 is not the way to go hikaru plays queen to h5 just brings another attacker into the game and now uh, Ding goes for queen captures on b2. Uh, he grabs the pawn, uh, allows bishop captures on h6, and now what do you play here? That is the question. Uh, Ding played d2, which is basically... Uh, which is basically uh, forcing a draw and ending the game. Uh, queen to b4, on the other hand, uh, seemingly allows uh, Ding to continue the uh, the game uh, because now you are threatening to capture the rook here. Hikaru has to deal with this, and then you play queen to e4, and now you brought the queen back to the king side. Now the, the queen can also help out with the defensive bishop to e3. Uh, we're going to play g6, and the game continues with uh, Ding always probably being a little bit better. He can start pushing the past c pawn. Uh, with perfect play, it's nothing but uh, you know may, maybe better than than what Ding uh, decided to do d2 was played and now Hikaru plays rook to d1 now a lot of pressure is being put on this uh, d2 pawn also if the queen goes back we can just capture it and now uh, Ding just goes for rook to d5 point is if queen to c2 uh, which uh, okay is, is very annoying you can help out with the defense also you're putting pressure on this d1 rook after queen e2 we're gonna win this pawn for example f5 we're just gonna capture it rook captures on d2 we trade everything captures 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 and captures and now rook d8 attacks the bishop bishop g5 let's say rook to d4 uh, it's uh it's a nice position for both of them but uh you know not, not much to look forward to uh, so instead rook to d5 by ding uh, and now hikaru has to decide uh, the e5 pawn is being threatened and there is uh, pretty much only only one good move that he can do here f4 is a bit too ambitious uh, he doesn't want to try this so he just goes for bishop captures on g7 and now ding does not have a choice he has to accept this and it is basically a forced draw not basically it is a forced draw so rook captures on g7 king captures and queen to g5 check controlling all of the dark squares here which ensures the draw king f8 we have queen to h8 check king to g8 queen g5 check king to f8 queen to h6 check and now ding even tries king to e7 but queen back to f6 now forcing the king to f8 because even though you can go to d7 and it's still a draw uh you have to allow queen captures on f7 which wins back one of the rooks after the king moves we're gonna win this one with check king b7 now king h2 and now uh, hikaru is just up two pawns uh, even okay with with perfect play it's still a draw but why would you why would you do this so king back to f8 queen h6 king to g8 and it was in this position that the players agree to a draw it's move 42 so time control has been reached nothing to worry about uh, but there is uh, of course nothing more to be done here hikaru is down a rook so there is nothing for hikaru to try uh he has to uh, hold hold the draw so really really a, a wonderful game hikaru 
uh, did uh, surprise Ding in the opening. Ding had to spend uh, a little bit of time. There's even a nice photo there you can see uh, Hikaru just blitzing out his moves and Ding, uh, you know, deep in thought. Not maybe not. Uh, maybe it's not that he doesn't like his position, but he has to uh, recall what he knows about uh, this Joko Pianissimo that uh, you know everyone plays. It's such an annoying opening. Uh, but yeah, Hikaru just enjoying the game between Rajabov and Rapport, uh, as you guys probably have if you've seen the previous video. If you haven't, do check it out and enjoy it like Hikaru was in the photo. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, very nice draw between Hikaru and the Ding. Uh, and for those of you who want me to show the standings uh, after uh, every game, here are the standings. So after six rounds, uh, Yanni Pomnici is leading with four and a half points. Then Fabi uh, with four points in second place. Uh, Nakamura and Rapport tied uh, with, with three points, then with two and a half points, Rajabov, Dingler, and Yang Shishto Duda, and uh, currently in last place, uh, Alireza Firuja with uh, two points. So there we have it. Uh, tomorrow is the uh, seventh round. Today we don't have any rounds as today is the rest day. Tomorrow uh, the leader, Yanni Pomnici, faces Richard Rapport, and uh, if he can manage uh, a draw there or even a win, he's probably uh, you know going as the leader in the second part of the tournament, as tomorrow will be the end of the first half of the camp candidates and then everyone just plays uh, everyone again only with uh, different uh, uh, pieces color uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Derek Bokelheide, uh, Go Fabi, uh, Dermot and Fergus uh, from David, uh, Vika Sony, Ryan Urban, and Hans Anderson for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to cover the candidates uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.